evening, Anna, and thank you very much for your participation. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Um, we've met, um, it's been probably nearly a year or maybe just over a year, we've met back in Peterborough and uh, lots of our students and obviously myself as well found your story and uh, your speech um, here at Compass absolutely amazing and very inspiring and uh, I'm very pleased that you accepted this invitation uh, for this uh, interview that uh, will motivate more and more young students. Uh, yes, we met over a year ago. Thank you for inviting me in Peterborough. I had such a lovely time and I met really great people and I'm looking forward to visiting you again soon. Um, and yes, I felt amazing discussing with them about education and the opportunities of education in UK. It was a very interesting uh, discussion we had indeed. Thank you very much. So without further ado, Anna, um, so could you please tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are from, and just a little bit about your background? Um, I am from Bucharest, Romania. I am 26 years old. I was born in the area called Ferentar. Uh, if you Google it, you'll see it's a big Roma community and the south area of Bucharest. Um, our area is like an urban legend where uh, Gaja and Roma people are living together and, and like there's a fusion there. Um, I'm a law graduate doing a master's degree in London, UK. And I, I came to the UK to actually switch my career from law to education. Um, at the moment, I'm happy to say I'm working as a teaching assistant in Essex with different schools. Um, and I'm finding my work really, really important for the community I'm working with. And my work involves not only Gaje kids, but also Gypsy Roma and travelers, which I'm proud to do. Um, so yes, at the moment I'm working with schools. I'm also work working with the uh, Metropolitan Police. I'm a translator, an interpreter, uh, Scottish Police and the NHS. Wow, you are very busy then. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am pretty busy, but thank God, busy from home at the moment. Certainly, and and it's. I guess it's good to be busy as well. You know, especially yes. if you have so much to offer. So, that's of course. Amazing. So, going back to your uh, childhood, uh, you said you are from Romania. Um, what are your memories like from Romania? And you know, going to schools. Um, you know, you said that obviously your place where you grew up uh, was tranquil. You know, it was that were there any issues? You know, how you how have you experienced your upbringing being a Roma female? If you would ask me this question before coming to the UK, I would say everything was all right-ish and I wouldn't bet an eye towards my education in the past. After coming to the UK and actually making myself more woke and more attuned to the movement, uh, movements that are happening nowadays, I would say uh, my experience with discrimination and racism in Romania, uh, it's quite um, interesting. Um, I have faced discrimination in school especially. And why, I, why I'm telling you this is because I didn't know that was discrimination. I have realized while, while following the uh, BLM movement online, uh, there were typical behaviors that are uh, um, meant for people who are belonging to a specific race or ethnicity. And those behaviors are going unnoticed. And I would say I was the victim of concealed racism. It's a specific tone in the voice. It's a specific attitude, uh, face expression towards the person and the lack of access given to that person to resources and making it look like it's something normal, it's just happened, is the odds, uh, the, that person had a rough day. But actually I was witnessing uh, my peer, my colleagues who were gadget and they had, they had access to the same things I was denied access to, but in a very nice way. Um, all this time I thought, oh, I was just unlucky. Um, the planets were not aligned, uh, but I actually was a victim, and I realize now as I'm working as a I'm working in education. So uh, in schools, especially, yes, I have faced discrimination. I had to work harder uh, for getting a specific mark uh, that my colleagues would get it easier. So uh, yes, I was, and it affected my mental health on the long run. I can imagine. And obviously, you know, this is quite a, 
significant thing. And I think, you know, this, um, how, you know, they call it here, the latent racism um, is, you know, it has got even worse effect on people and especially young people that uh, open racism would, would have. So yeah, no, I completely understand it. And uh, so then you moved into the UK and how old were you when you moved here? I was 21 or 22 years old. Okay. And I was an adult. How was your experience then? How have you perceived the British people, the system and everything else? Um, compared to the Romanian way of teaching people, of addressing people or, or approaching people, uh, there is less emotional involvement in the communication, in the British way of communicating with others, which, in my opinion, is making the essence, the context, is making it easier to be delivered, which in Romania is quite lost in translation, is lost on, on the way in, in, in communication, first of all. Second of all, um, in the British way of um, working uh, in a group, uh, there is more education delivered to people on how to improve their productivity, which I did not find here in, in, in Romania. Um, and then there is the respect towards yourself and the culture and people don't get that um easy don't get it don't don't find they don't find it easy to make jokes towards your culture to make jokes towards your appearance which uh, it happens easily in romania and it's quite um let's say enforced or encouraged um and so a part of obviously the attitude towards uh, you know ethnic minorities and the education what would you say that you like the most about the uk you can sit at the table with whoever you want, wherever they are from all over the world. And uh, actually learning so much, you think you already know from the internet from back home, you actually don't know anything. Um, actually, I when I got to the UK, I made friends from all over the world. And I am proud to know that the human heritage is so ample, is so, it's, it's full of variety. And uh, I get to enjoy so many wonderful things that are hidden from us. And we're not actually allowed to, to taste it, to have a grasp of it. So the, um, the flavor of the UK, it's, I call it the equality and diversity policy that is applied everywhere. Very, very nicely said, thank you. And um, okay, so you came to the UK and uh, have you done your studies only in Romania or have you done some studies here in the UK as well? I have started with my studies in Romania I did a, a bachelor in law and then I came to the UK and I started doing my master degree and at the moment I'm working on a DPSI which is a diploma in public service interpreting uh, because my aim is to work with the immigration uh, immigration um, court and police. So at the moment, yes, I'm, I'm working on two degrees. One of them is a master and the other one, yes, uh, on a DPSI. That's amazing. Well, you know, I'm very curious how you manage all this, you know, the studies, your work and all the community work that you do. It is it is uh, demanding, but it is connected to what I did before. So at the moment, I don't find it that tiring because I like what I do. So you you study and you also you said you work as a teaching assistant at a school. What um, you know, how do you feel, you know, about this job? You know, what uh, differences you you make uh, as a teaching assistant? Uh, I didn't know, I never knew I would like to be a teacher to, to start with, to teach others and to like uh, develop skills in others. Uh, what I'm bringing to them, in my opinion, is my own originality and the way I'm converting my experiences, my bad experiences in new and uh, better ones for others. So what happened bad to me in the past, I'm preventing and fighting them. So others would never encounter such unfortunate situations. As I said, uh, the children I have in front of me in the classroom are apart from British, um, and I'm talking about white British, uh, they're from all over the world, including uh, Gypsy Roman travelers. And I'm proud to see them there. I'm proud to coach them from time to time or mentor them. Um, though I'm not acknowledging them that I'm Roma because I don't think I should uh, 
mark that point in front of them because I believe that we should uh, respect the person in front of us, not the race, but the race, the race respect has to come from within without any discussion and debate. That's very, very nice. And, uh, but uh, I take it, even though you don't tell them, they will, most of the children will re recognize you as being Roma or, or not? Uh, this is a tricky question. If they're from Romania, they will recognize me. Uh, if they're from anywhere in the UK, um, I have heard people speaking to me in Hindi, others speaking to me in Spanish. Uh, people don't actually, cannot place me exactly somewhere on the map. And I find it funny. Um, so only for people who have the eye for a gypsy girl or a Roma girl, they would say, oh, you're from there, you look like this and that. But uh, one good thing about British people and the, the British system is that people don't get to joke with that. People don't get to pick on you with that. And that's not a topic for a brief discussion or casual discussion. So we never encounter such unpleasant situations. That's, that's absolutely true. And uh, But uh, what I also think, and, and I've seen this uh, when you came to, to Peterborough, and I've seen it lots of other times when I visited schools with my colleagues, you know, I think that those Romanian, especially Roma children that are at your schools, um, and they know that you are Romanian, Roma female, for them, it must be absolutely amazing feeling to see, um, you know, somebody from within their community achieving so much that you have achieved in your life. And I've seen it here in Peterborough when you were talking, the girls, you know, when, when I stand there, yeah, it's nice, it's Roma, okay, good. But for a female, you know, and in such position, highly educated, well-spoken to stand there, you know, the girls were like, wow, you know, like, like oh, I can't believe it, you know. So it must be, you probably must see this a lot at your school. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Actually, I miss the, I miss all the youngsters from there and the girls especially. Um, um, yes, when uh, people who know me, who can who can say, oh, you're from here, you're like that, uh, they feel safer. The children are from Romania, not only Roma, if they're Gaja too, if they see me in front of them, they're like, oh, wait, this is a good story. I can reach this good story in life. Uh, this is the narrative I want to follow. Uh, they get this picture that, oh, the story has a good ending as well, not a bad one. Because, you know, when you're Romanian and you're a gypsy or Roma, uh, people expect the less from you. So you're expecting less from yourself too. So they have this uh, safer feeling. If we're talking about girls, I'm doing my bit towards feminism too. I'm trying to be feminist. I cannot say I'm a feminist. Uh, and I'm trying my best to make them understand that any target is achievable in the UK and they, sh they should forget what happened in their home country because here is a different narrative. So yes. Absolutely. Um, and this takes me actually very nicely to my following questions, which is actually around the changing role of Roma women within the society. What's your opinion? Do you see the role of Rom Roma women in the society changing, not only within the wider society, but also within the Roma community? Uh, at the moment, yes, I would say there is a change. And uh, in my opinion, if I would point out something that really needs changing is the mental health. Uh, I will always be advocating for mental health. Myself, I am a person who has been affected mentally by racism. Uh, in the Roma culture, the woman, uh, when she is um, brought up by her parents, she, she grows uh, with these concepts in her mind and her system that, oh, my value is less, I should uh, um, lay lower, I should say less. Uh, nowadays, um, the system is granting them more access to education. And when they get access to education, of course, their independence level is growing. And the Romani woman, women feminism movement is growing at the moment. So in the future, um, I can see many other Romani women uh, following their dreams, uh, but I can see with that, some of the traditional aspects being not lost, but some of them will be dissolved on the way because uh, it sounds quite tricky from my side to say it, but part of the so-called traditions of Roma are based on the woman. 
And I, I completely agree with it. There is this, uh, it's actually a big part of the Romani traditions and uh, um, with the Ro Roma uh, women emancipation, it will be changing. But I think, you know, it's a time about, you know, for, it's, it's just about the time to change it because uh, uh, young girls here in, in, in the UK suddenly realize that uh, those expectations, whether it's family expectation or community expectations, are based on very old traditions that are not maybe even relevant in these days, you know, in the 21st century. And that, you know, the fact that they are Roma women doesn't mean that they cannot have a family, but at the same time to pursue their career and go to university and work as a police officers or uh, doctors, lawyers, or whatever it, else it is, you know. So that's, I think that's, that's the beauty of, of this change. Um, if I can have my comeback on this, is that actually the women from my generation, they have a conflict, the intergenerational conflict with their parents and mostly with their mothers, because the parents do not understand this quite sudden uh, um, development, like why are, you why are you married? Let's just say it, uh, a woman in her 20s, if she's approaching uh, uh, her 30th birthday and she's not married, in the opinion of the community, she is not a fulfilled woman. She's not happy. And there the conflicts are, are starting from. Uh, my final opinion on this question is that the development of the woman, the Roma woman, will take 20 years or 30 years more. So I would say it starts with uh, my generation and it will be clean and clear towards the next one. So we are, I believe, the parents of the actual um, Roma women that are free. This is my opinion on this topic. Very well said, yes, thank you. And still on the topic of Roma, um, what does it mean to you to be Roma? It means to take part on a project you did not choose. And it means to be free. And to be free, it can have good and bad impact. What's most important is if one, any of us would choose that project again if we had the choice when we were born. So I would choose it again, over and over again. For me to be Roma is a project all of our lives. One other question for you specifically. It's, um, so obviously, you know, you're, you have achieved so much uh, and, uh, you know, you are studying, working and working towards your goals. But where do you see yourself in five or 10 years time? Well, I'm taking pride of being superstitious and I don't know if that's part of my tradition. I wouldn't give actually um, details, but I will give a hint. So let's say today's I'm following rules. Hopefully one day I will take part in making rules for the better of the community. Lovely, thank you very much. And lastly, uh, the last question for all those young people that will be listening to, do, uh, to this video interview, uh, what would be your recommendation to them? What tips would you give them to succeed in their life? First of all, to develop their emotional intelligence and develop also their critical thinking. Do not ever believe that racism will be cut down or deleted from this world. It will always be there. Develop mechanisms that are helping you not only cope with those cope with racism actually develop mechanisms that are helping you achieve your target without getting damaged or without having to fix yourself every single time um be aware be woke and do not think that your targets are not achievable all of them are, are achievable just make sure you're not stopping on the way for the unnecessary stuff. And unnecessary stuff are the bad things people are bringing to us, such as racism, discrimination, and xenophobia. Wow, thank you very much, uh, Anna. It was very, very powerful. Um, you are very uh, well-spoken, I have to say. It's a uh, it's very you. pleasure to speak to you uh, about those topics. and. Uh, I'll be really looking forward to another opportunities uh, for you to come to Peterborough and speak to our, our youngsters here again, uh, because they, as I said before, you know, they really enjoyed every word that you've said to them. Please tell them I miss them very much. Thank you for your invitation. I can't wait to, to meet them again, but I'm waiting for tier four area to change its situation. So 
uh, when I'll get the chance to travel, of course, uh, the first point on the map is Peterborough. It was a, such a pleasure experience.